From the EPR Creation Studio, this is Jason Staples bringing you Unconquered with Doc Staples. This podcast, as always, is brought to you by EPR Creations, by Louis Marquez of Keller Williams Realty in Jacksonville, Florida, by Shenandoah Real Estate in the Research Triangle of North Carolina, by Garage Makeovers, the number one garage remodeling company in South Florida, and by my newest advertising partner, very proud to announce this, Justin Galloway of Benchmark Mortgage, serving Florida, Alabama, Tennessee, and Kentucky, and expanding. If you've been listening to me the last 11 years, you know I have not taken just any advertisers. I only accept the ones I really believe in, and Justin is one of the best in the mortgage loan space. If you're looking to buy a house in Florida, Alabama, Tennessee, or Kentucky, shop around, and as a part of that shopping around, give Justin a call. Let him know you heard about him from the Unconquered podcast with Doc Staples. You'll be glad you did. Information's in the show notes. Okay, well, let's get to it. This is the Virginia Tech preview. Not going to be an especially long one, not like what we did with Clemson, because I think this is a pretty simple, a, a simpler game to analyze. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get to it. So we're going to start on the Virginia Tech offensive side of the ball, and I think this one's pretty straightforward, to be honest. Virginia Tech is going to try to run the football. That's what they do. And that's partly because they just don't throw the football all that well. So I do think this is a pretty well-coached team just in general in terms of I think they they play hard. They play uh, pretty physical, especially on the defensive side. But they're limited. Uh, they're, they're, their main guy that you're going to have to worry about, they've got basically two guys that you worry about on the offensive side, and that's uh, Chiron Drones. He he's a a guy that he transferred in from Baylor. They they brought him in to challenge their starter Grant Wells, who got hurt. And the thing is, he couldn't beat out Grant Wells. So, you know that that's the thing. So he he's not a an especially accurate thrower. He does throw. He does have a big arm and can throw a, a decent deep ball. You, you saw that actually last week against Pitt. So you do have to be mindful of that. But he's not a guy that's going to line up and throw the ball all over the yard. He's not going to make a, b- a bunch of precise passes to cut your secondary up. What he does offer is he's a big guy and breaks tackles and is a legit running threat. And basically what they've done the last couple weeks is they have pivoted to become essentially an option offense. That's what they are. They're going to run inverted veer. They're going to run like wildcat looking stuff. They're going to run... Uh, you know, standard zone read, power read, and they're going to run the football as much as they can. They Virginia Tech in this game wants to shorten this game, hang on to the football, and try to take this game, make it as competitive as possible, as long as possible, because they know they cannot afford to get into a shootout. So th- if, if I'm Virginia Tech coming into this game, I'm basically running the football 70% of the time, maybe more, and playing a lot of four down football option on fourth down, you know, you get to third and two fourth and fourth and one, you know, these situations and you try to just find different ways of scheming up two yards and just hang on to the football, keep the offense on the sideline and try to keep this game moving. I think that's what you've got to do. And aside from that, you're going to see some play action, some waggles, that sort of thing, and let him uncork a few down the field to see if you can get a freebie. But I think that's what they're going to do in this game. And the other guy you have to worry about is, is uh, and I think you say this, uh, Beishul Tutin. Uh, Tutin is a good back. So, you know, he's he's 200 plus pounds, maybe 205. And he's a guy that, if you watch that pit game, and you know, I went back and, and took a look look through that a little bit more closely because I got a chance to watch Pitt uh, pretty closely in in the coverage that I did for North Carolina. And you know, Pitt had some trouble tackling him. He broke a lot of tackles. He's got good acceleration, good nose for short yardage, and made some made a few chunk plays out of situations where he had some initial contact. He's a guy that can that can uh, that can actually pound the rock and has some good good speed. Also a legit kick return. Again, that speed is 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 really good. So a uh, legit kick returner. So that's basically their offense is those two guys. 
They do have one six five wide receiver, Daquan Felton. He he's he's a pretty good player. He he will challenge you on some vertical routes and he's the guy you have to worry about in terms of some of the deep stuff that they're gonna throw off play action. Just be conscious of where he is, make sure your corners cut off those that deep access, and I think you're okay. Force them to throw to throw the football down the field in a controlled fashion because you are going to see some misfires from drones if that happens. Uh, honestly, I think there are some similarities to what you got from from Boston College in terms of the the offense and what some of its limitations are. But I think Castellanos is a is a is a better overall thrower, and I think they had a little bit more. I think they had a better offensive line too. I think I think Boston College's offensive line is actually pretty good this year, which is amazing considering how bad they were last year. But they got a couple players back from injury and you know they got one guy that's going to be a reasonably high draft pick at 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 guard and they were able to to do some things up front that I don't think Virginia Tech's going to be able to do. If you go back and you watch that Pitt game, Pitt was in the backfield a good bit. And they did get a, a, a pretty decent number of tackles for loss. I don't actually have the number here in front of me, but Pitt was able to to get in the backfield a good bit in that game. And I expect Florida State will be able to do the same. The key is you've just got to finish and you've got to be more disciplined behind that. And the other thing is that Pitt is an absolute mess on offense. So, you know, if Pitt had had a, comp- a competent offense in that game, if they'd had a quarterback who is not about to switch to, uh, to tight end. I mean, that that's a crazy thing is that uh, Dracovic has just decided that he's moving to tight end for the final t- three quarters of his final season as a, as a, a college football player. And it's just a matter of, I mean, he, he'd had uh, surgery on that hand a couple of years ago. And frankly, if you watch the ball come out of his hand, he's a guy that it, it clearly, he never fully recovered from that. And he just, he can't throw it like he wanted to. And he can't throw it like Pitt hoped, hoped he would. So now he switched positions and that's the guy that Pitt was able to beat last week. Or that Virginia Tech was able to beat last week. The guy that put Pitt put out their quarterback. And if they'd had a competent offense, I think I think they probably still win that game because the fact that they just kept giving good field position and and being unable to score against what's a pretty good Virginia Tech defense basically allowed eventually Virginia Tech's running game to just plod away and pound away and eventually get some of the plays that they needed to on top of a of, of the one long play that went to uh, Felton uh, on a on a vertical route. So, you know, that's that's where they are. But the other guys that they've got, you know, Stephen Gosnell uh, is a transfer from UNC who couldn't get on the field at UNC. I mean, he couldn't get on the field as a backup at UNC. And now he's one of the core, you know, top three receivers on the, on, on the Virginia Tech team. Jalen Lane, another guy, he's a senior who, I mean, he's still playing because he's just not, he's not a, he's not a special player essentially. So basically if I'm coming in here from the Florida state defense side, if I'm on that defensive staff, I mean, I already said coming out of the Clemson game and the second thoughts podcast that I did on that one, I think Florida state sort of found its identity a little bit in that in the second half of that game as a team that can trust their corners can trust their secondary in general to in pass coverage with more and more one-on-one stuff and that this is a team that can that can commit to bringing more pressure and trying to trying to choke teams out in the running game well this is an opportunity to do that this is an opportunity where you've got a team that you don't believe I don't believe, and based on what I see on, on on the tape, I don't. I just don't believe that they have the receivers who can beat your corners. And you know, if they even if they get some one on ones against your safeties, I don't think they're going to beat those guys with regularity. I think you can single cover them, and I think you can try to dictate to the offense, sort of old school Florida State style, dictate to the offense that they're just not going to be able to run the football. And conveniently, you're playing a team that doesn't throw it very well at all and just ran the football 59 times the prior week and is going to try to run the ball as often as they can. Well, in my view, this is an opportunity for Florida state to lean into what should be their defensive identity, basically for the rest of the year, go ahead and do what you can to take away the running game and get a bunch of three and outs 
or four and outs in some cases. Get tackles for loss, beat the offensive line up front, commit the extra secondary help to the to the uh, to the run fits, and just be sound and force the quarterback to beat you with his arm with some precision passing against wide receivers who probably can't really beat your your corners with a lot of consistency. And if they get a couple big plays out of it, to me, if I'm Adam Fuller, if I'm Mike Norvell, I'm perfectly fine giving up two 70-yard pass plays for touchdowns in this game if it means that I give up essentially nothing on the ground and don't let their quarterback run wild and I'm able to bottle other things up. I mean, you know, you're, you know, they're not going to beat you with 14 points. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, look, if I can, if I can just give up two, you know, let's say two, maybe even three reasonably big plays and Hey, maybe my corners or safeties, if they do get beat on a couple of those long ones, just make the tackle. And then we're back to playing football. I'm willing to give up some, some over the top, or at least scheme in such a way that I'm going to force them to get those plays, but I'm willing to give up a couple of touchdowns over the top in exchange for completely choking out the rest of their, their offensive scheme. Cause then they're beating you left-handed and I don't think they score more than 14, 17, maybe 21 points. If they have to throw the football odds are they don't, they don't get to 10 because I don't think they throw it consistently enough. And I don't think those receivers are going to consistently beat your, your, your corners for long yardage. So this is an opportunity then to get really aggressive up front. And by aggressive, I don't mean just trying to get upfield and, and getting sloppy. I mean, just turn those guys loose and let them, let them handle the running game and hit the quarterback a bunch. That's what you do. Now, Virginia Tech, what they're going to try to do is they're going to try to take advantage of Florida State's linebackers and especially of Kevin Knowles in terms of targeting some weak points, you know, potentially on, on some play action and all that, try to get some tight end stuff or slot receiver stuff against those guys, but especially trying to make Kevin Knowles be the force player in the running game and make him come up and tackle. That's what I... If I were going to try to do this, if I were going to try to scheme this from the Virginia Tech side, I would be saying, how can I make sure that I scheme it up so that that guy, so that 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 safety is having to come downhill to tackle as often as possible. And I think I can win enough of those matchups to keep the chains moving. That's what I'm hoping to do. That also, to me, means that it might be a good game to see a guy like Hussey, as a, who's a bigger, a bigger body at safety, against a team that you don't really believe can beat your one-on-ones outside all that well. Do you, do you give Hussey more of a look to uh, against a run-heavy team to be basically a, a tackler in the box to come down and, and do some of that? I think that's one of those things that you you considered, you know, maybe going with some of the, the rotation at that safety spot a little bit more in this game. But I think this is a team that you should be able to choke out with the personnel that you have and with the limitations as far as the throwing game that they've got. So... Take away the verticals with your corners. Just tell them to force force them to force them to beat you underneath and then take away the running game. That's that's what you do. And I think Florida State should be able to do this. I think this is one of those games where the starters, you know, you, you should be able to get this to garbage time and, and be able to, to play a decent number of people in the second half. The starters should not be giving up more than, you know, I'm looking at the uh overall output for Virginia Tech on the season, you know, they're averaging five yards per play on the season. 5.47 against Pitt, 5.29 against Marshall, 4.49 against Rutgers. This is a team that you shouldn't be giving up more than four yards of play to. When Florida State starters come out of the game, the average yards per play should be something with less than a four in front of it. Should be a three point or a two point something. I would expect maybe 3.2, 3.3 yards per play if they play the way they should. So that's where I, that's where I have it. And, and again, that's a little bit contingent on whether or not they are adequately aggressive against this run threat. 
They've got to take away the quarterback's legs even more than they did against against Boston College. Boston College had some guys that could at least give you a little bit more trouble on that front, and they were better up front on on the offensive line and the way that they used Castellanos because of Castellanos' arm and being able to make some of those throws was a little different. But I think you you just take that away, and I think you you the the starters should be leaving this game with a three in front of the decimal point for yards per play. Now, on the other side of the ball, I think this becomes a more interesting matchup. I think this is one of those games where Florida State should be able to do it to to turn this into a uh, an opportunity to work on getting the running game off the ground against it uh, pretty good. This is a top half of the country defense. They've got a few players on this defense. The one safety they've got is a, is a quality player in particular. They got a good end on this defense. But this is a team that I think you can they, they've had some issues with with run fits, especially from the linebackers and some of the safeties coming up in secondary support have not been great. You know, you saw Pitt had opportunities in that game for some some big plays and just missed them. Marshall didn't miss him so much. That's one of the reasons Marshall actually won that game. You go back and Marshall rushing was able to uh, was able to put up 4.86 yards per per carry at 214 rushing yards and two scores against this Virginia Tech defense because the linebackers and safeties were not especially reliable in terms of coming down and hitting and fitting the proper gap. This is a team you can cut back on. And this is an opportunity, I think, to really work on your outside zone, inside zone series as much as anything. Now, I know they're going to want to work some counter and continue to work on what has been their bread and butter play. But this is a, this is a game where you can continue to work, I think, all three of those and try to get your running game off the ground. Now, Virginia Tech is going to come up and they're, they're going to play a lot of base, middle of the field closed, single safety stuff, mostly just cover three. I mean, they're they're just spot dropping for the most part. But... They're going to play a lot of cover three and try to bring that extra guy into the box and challenge your running game. And if they do try to challenge that running game and just play spot drop cover three, well, now you've got big opportunities for some big plays to uh, your wide receivers. Now, you're not normally going to beat them just over the top on uh, on verticals with that sort of thing because they are they're basically scheming to take that away with the middle of the field closed. Those you know receive those corners just bailing and playing over the top deep. But you do have options on things like dig routes. You've got some interesting options with, say, your post-climb series, which is one of the one of Norvell's favorite calls. The idea of that is that the climb route, which is like a deep over route, has to suck that deep safety in, and then you get a post over him. Uh, actually, Pitt hit a very similar concept out of that, out of, out of a reduced formation uh, for a long score. I suspect, given how how much Florida State has has run that in the past, that Pry is gonna gonna have that safety, making sure he hangs back over that over that uh, that deep post, which then gives you opportunities on that deep over route over the over the top of the linebackers. I think this is one of those games where there's going to be opportunities to throw really well and with some success in the deep middle portion of the or in the intermediate middle portion of the field. And Florida State hasn't done that a bunch so far this year. I think this is one of those games where, you know, some of that play action, throw the dig, throw the deep over, sort of over top of the backers in front of the, the deep safety and into a void there. I think there's going to be some good opportunities for that in this game. But again, I think this is one of those games where they're going to come out and I wouldn't be surprised to see 45 or 50 carries from Florida State running backs in this game as they try to get that running running game untracked or on track, I should say. They're going to try to get that, that the tracks clear so that they can find some rhythm and figure out what their identity is going to be as a, as a running football team. And this is an opportunity against a, a team that you think you can, you can handle their offense. This is an opportunity to try to do that against the defense that you should be able to do it against, but is going to provide you some, some, some challenge at doing that. This is a good, a good matchup for that. So this is a game where I wouldn't be surprised to see you know Benson go over 100 yards, one of the other guys go over 100 yards as they are able to hit some some cutbacks. I mean, I think that's going to be the emphasis through through practice this week, or going to have been the emphasis in practice this week, 
where really making sure that you hit your cutbacks correctly again and that you're reading your your keys correctly in your inside zone outside zone maybe even duo i mean i think duo is actually a really good call against against this particular virginia tech front because of how their backers consistently misfit uh, duo is one where you just double team you get two double teams on the inside and you run it with two you run it with a, a tight end and an h back on the same side so you know not as many teams run duo because it requires basically 12 personnel but florida state base is in 12 personnel this may be an opportunity to play a good bit of duo or to run a, to run duo a little bit and i'll be interested to see if they do that but your inside zone, outside zone stuff. See see what you can do in terms of the cutback stuff, making sure your backs are, are reading that correctly. This has got to be a point of emphasis this week. And, you know, I think there's going to be some space on the edge when they, you know, I think Virginia Tech will try to spill that counter and all that. This is an opportunity to start hitting the edge a little bit more on the counter too. But this is a game where I think they're going to try to run the football a bunch and then some play action for some bigger chunk plays in, in the passing game. And I also think this is a game where if Mike Norvell has his druthers, Jordan Travis probably is out of their mid-third quarter. But that'll take Florida State actually executing well and playing well, and they've not done that so far this year. If they play their D game, this is a Virginia Tech team that can beat you. If they let that quarterback run around a bunch, it's a team that can beat them. But I do think that this is this is a, a matchup on both sides where you know, if, if Florida State is who they think they are, this is a matchup that they should be able to uh, to handle. Again, defensively, they gave up 5.93 yards to Pitt, and Pitt is a bad offensive football team. And some of the ways that they were able to dominate that Pitt offensive line, I don't think they're going to be able to do to Florida State. Pitt's playing with four guys starting on the offensive line that were not starters at the beginning of the year. I mean, that's a, that Pitt team's a mess right now. Which bodes well, by the way, for when Florida State actually plays them later. But for now, we're talking about Virginia Tech. And again, I think this is a game where Florida State can... If Rutgers can can run the football for 256 yards and 6.4, 6.04 yards per play and, and bust a decent number of long run plays, a couple of them on short yardage, then... I think Florida State should be able to more or less match that. And I think Florida State will be six plus yards per play in this game before garbage time, probably over seven is my guess. And a decent amount of that should be on the uh, in the running game. I think this is the game where they start to get some things cleaned up on that front and are able to then pay off with a few longer chunk plays in the passing game when they need to. To me, if you're watching this game, for what Florida State really needs to improve on and what they need to do to to demonstrate improvement, can the offense stay on schedule better in this game than they have through the first four, or are they still living in third and third down and and having to get fourth down conversions to finish drives? You know, one one of the measures that I would be looking at in this game is does Florida State have to go for it on fourth down at any point? If they don't and they're able to score despite that, then they're starting to make some progress in exactly the areas that they need to. So that then brings us to the summary and conclusion portion where we can talk through what the actual expectations are. Like I said, I think this is a game where the starters should not be giving up more than three point something yards per play to what I think is a pretty anemic Virginia Tech offense. They're going to provide. They're going to uh, present a running quarterback threat and a, and a true option offense threat that you really haven't played this year, aside from the Boston College game. Where thing is, they choked Boston College out through the first three and a or th- first two and a half quarters in that, and then all of a sudden Boston College is able to to make it interesting. I mean, folks forget that game was not that game was not really ever truly in doubt. You get a lot of talk about, well, you know, they only beat Boston College by two. They really struggled with Boston College. Yeah, but they were up by by 21 midway through the third quarter. This was not a, a game where it was super competitive the whole way. This was a, a team coming back to make it interesting. And yeah, it got interesting at the end. What they need to do is basically clean up some of the stuff that they did that they didn't do well against the quarterback run game against BC 
handle their business in the in the running game and just close the door when they get to that point this time through instead of basically kicking it around a couple times and giving up a, a fumbled kickoff squib kick and and several of those other things i mean the the fumble inside the red zone for for a uh, scoop and score those are the things that made that game close if they just handle their business and handle their gap responsibility and play physical, this Virginia Tech team is going to have trouble scoring on them. And at that point, the offense can start to really cook because they're going to get opportunities. And I think they will get opportunities in this game. So I think this is a game where, where Florida State's going to cover. And I think this is one where you start to see some of the benefits of the bye week in terms of personnel, guys getting healthier, guys no longer having the flu. And starting to a, a team that's starting to figure out who it's going to be on both sides of the ball. I am interested to see how much more pressure they try to bring in terms of, of taking care of that run threat, how much they're willing to just play more middle of the field, close true corners on the Island kind of stuff. But yeah, I think this is going to be one where Florida state's able to, to start pulling away by the early third quarter. And by the fourth quarter, this is one of those where it's probably uh, more, mostly backups on the field. I'm going to go with Florida State, 45, Virginia Tech. I'm going to go with 17 here. I, I do think it wouldn't be surprising to see Virginia Tech sort of get a late score in there. But I think with the starters on the field, I don't think Virginia Tech is going to have more than 10 before we, we start to get to garbage time and start to get some stuff moving around. So I'm going to go with 45-17 here for for uh Florida State, I think this is a 90% type game where 9 out of 10 times you line this up and Florida State wins comfortably. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Talk to you all in the Hot Takes podcast. If you've been enjoying this podcast, please leave a five-star rating over at Apple Podcasts and wherever else you listen to podcasts. Post and repost episodes on social media and tell a friend. And if you haven't left a review in a while, do it again. It really does help the visibility of the podcast. Before we go, I'd also like to thank my advertising partners once more. That's EPR Creations, Louis Marquez of Keller Williams Realty in Jacksonville, Florida, Shenandoah Real Estate in the Research Triangle of North Carolina, Garage Makeovers, the number one garage remodeling company in South Florida, and Justin Galloway of Benchmark Mortgage, serving Florida, Alabama, Tennessee, and Kentucky. You can also stop by the Unconquered shop at unconqueredpodcast.com where you can buy stickers, pins, magnets, t-shirts, and other swag. And thanks also to all those supporters over at Patreon where I post video analysis and field questions for the podcast. I am especially grateful to those above the dynasty level. That is Andrew Garrett, Brian Leininger, Neil Cook, Casey Kidd, Chris Chartrand, Dave Blair, Hector Cartagena, Jack Horton, Jimmy Van, Jonathan Kennedy, Keith Cheney, Lee Caswell, Tyler Kashishke, Vince Calandra, and Bert Bertoldi. You all are far more generous than I deserve. I'm really grateful. Thanks to you all. This has been Unconquered with Doc Staples. I'm your host, Jason Staples. Thanks for listening and thanks for your support. I made this. <laughs>